it's a late show. I wanted to be comfortable. How do you think the audience feels when he outdresses them every night? Seriously. All right, so I, I figure I'll give you guys watching at home some advice. If it's, if it's midnight or 2 a.m. on a Friday night, maybe your night didn't go exactly as you planned. If you're watching television at this point. So I'm going to tell you, and for all you guys in the audience as well, uh, the best place to get laid, if that's what you're trying to do, is a gay bar. <laughs> but here's why, because you can hear the conversation that the girl has in her head uh, before she goes out. It's, you know, I don't want to get hit on my guy tonight. I just want to go dance. I'm just going to call my friend Gay Johnny, and I'm just going to go dance. Four hours go by. She gets a few shots of Jägermeister down her gullet. Gay Johnny's hooked up three times in the bathroom. Little Mr. Low self-esteem rears his ugly head. She's starting to look around just seeking eye contact. Just, am I pretty? Am I pretty? Am I pretty? She'll find the first straight throat available just to shove her tongue down it for validation. That's how I got laid for a long time because I took psychology in college. All right, so I was having sex with my ex-wife. It was a very domestic setting. We're in our kitchen, kitchen table, and uh, our little Aussie shepherd runs up and licks me directly in the bunghole, directly in the, in the, so, I mean, I stopped the dog. Of course, you stop the dog. You turn around and you stop the dog, but physiologically speaking, the pleasure center of our brain engages before any logic or reason <laughs> or societal conventions, so. For the time it takes one neuron to shoot across the synapse, it was like, mm -hmm. and I noticed it. I noticed it, and I have to wear that like a badge of shame for the rest of my days. I feel like I should have to register somewhere. Uh, I've been I've been staying a hundred yards away from dog parks, but just to be safe, just. <laughs> I don't want to see the Animal Planet version of To Catch a Predator, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, you know, due to a, a very abnormal proportion of women that I've been with who have, uh, let's say, put out on a first date, um, an abnormal proportion of those women have owned a ferret. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever smelled a ferret, Steven, I don't know, but they have a very distinctive stitch. It, it burns in there. Uh, so due to the strong association between smell and memory, I had to explain to my girlfriend why I had a boner in a pet store. <laughs> so when she asked the logical question, do you have a thing for bestiality? I probably shouldn't have said, well, there was this short period with my ex-wife and an Australian shepherd. It was really brief, but I mean, I got a cop to that, right? Gotta... <sighs> All right, guys, I, I'll tell you one last thing. I was driving over here, and uh, I'm in the car. There's a fly in the car, and it lands on my arm. Now, I didn't do anything about it for quite some time, because I may or may not have been intoxicated, and I may or may not have had narcotics in the vehicle, so I don't want to get arrested for a fly, you know, but after a while, you realize this is in Africa. I went ahead and took a swing. So I tried to hit the fly. I didn't kill it. I just I barely, barely nicked it. Just barely nicked the fly, but it took off. It was still in the car for the rest of the drive, but it didn't bother anymore. That was it. Just one little nick and it stayed away. So I thought, is a fly smarter than a battered woman? Oh. <laughs> no, it, it can't be that. It, it, the fly's just basic. It's, it's survival. This thing's trying to kill me, get away from it. Uh, uh, we're too smart. We overthink it. It's, but I really love him. And he only hits me every now and then. <laughs> already cropped up two of his larvae. <sighs> All right. Uh, Steven, did you know that zebras actually perform abortions through forced copulation? No. <laughs> It's a true fact. It's a true fact. They do it in times of famine as a means of population control. So that's what's black, white, and red all over. Uh, Thanks, guys. I'm Mike Long.